The year is 2001. Computers are way too complex, but your grandkids only communicate through email, so what do you do? Well, that's how the Sidco mail station Mevo 100 was marketed. And when you break it down this halfway step into what was considered to be less intimidating than a PC, still has all the inconvenience of dial-up internet, ISP subscription fees, and reading emails on a screen 80% smaller than its counterpart. I bought this on clearance at Kmart around 2004, so 20 years ago, and much like Kmart, this device's fate was sealed into obsolescence by pushing obtuse compromises onto the customer. And the worst of which, you are locked into one ISP only, you cannot change it, you're paying for internet service fees without any internet accessibility, this device is not HTML compliant, and if you don't like that, you can get fired. You can kind of understand everything about this device by the looks of it. It's a cyber deck, but for senior citizens. Compared to a monitor of the time, the sun backlit monochrome LCD is tiny, and pair that with a chiclet keyboard, it's not as appealing as a PC. The screen tilts to this comfortable hunched over position, which feels just right if you're hoping to be able to read the screen. And aside from the overall size, it does have better clarity than a DMG Game Boy, so that's going for it. The contrast is nice, but that's a zero sum point thanks to the UI design you're forced to work with. Look at all the screen space wasted by constantly showing the date, address, this blank space, and the email subject line, which is always in view. You can view more lines when you're composing an email by changing the font size, but I don't feel inspired to write more when readability is the trade-off. One thing I can't really comprehend is the change from the original black color to computer beige. My guess is looking too futuristic might push your target audience away. So what is the point of using something that has a four kilobyte message limit and cannot connect to even the internet anymore? It's kind of a novelty device if you want to have focus time to compile a message, even like this script. I typed about half of this script on the device and admittedly what was appealing quirkiness about it kind of turned into criticism just from using it. But what if you type a whole script out and you're stuck not able to move your document to a modern device? Well, luckily the shortcomings of 1999 still play us some favors today. You can find in the manual if you want to protect your data in the event of hardware failure, uh, the mail station encourage you to physically print emails as a backup. This parallel port in the rear can connect directly to a printer from the era, but I don't have one. We need some in-between hardware to capture the output from a parallel printer port. Segue to this awesome project by Brian K. White. Brian took Henrik Hoffman's project and made some drastic quality of life fixes. Props to Brian for including the bill materials and the KiCad files to get your own PCBs made, which is what I did. Some assembly is required, but all the heavy lifting is done by the FT245L, which contains a bi-directional USB to parallel first in first out interface. Now, if you don't want to go this route, chat GPT is confident you can do this all within Arduino and will write the code for you, but the effort into this hardware layout is worth the price of admission instead. The integrated circuit alone will run you about $4 and change, but once assembled, plug this into your Sidco mail station and the USB into your PC, and the rest is pretty easy. Open up your device manager and watch out for the newest COM and LPT port to show up. Then you can open an application like Putty, click the serial connection, type in the COM port number from before, and open the line. Press print on your Sidco mail station, and it's like x-ray vision for your printer's parallel port. You can copy this terminal text to a Word doc and tell people how you like to type on basically a typewriter with no paper because you feel more connected to the past or something. I also found this project which adds Wi-Fi and allows one to connect to a Telnet server which kind of takes the hardware connection to the mail station on a new level, uh, but sadly that hardware was retired. Uh, however, there is enough info on supporting web pages you could probably piece it together. 
So check out those videos if you're interested. So thanks for joining me on this obsolete hardware tangent. Links to all the other projects are in the video description. And thank you for watching.